One of the high points of the NHL offseason is getting to watch the entry draft take place. As a fan, it's important to see your team succeed in the draft so you feel that their future remains in good hands. We've seen some unbelievable talents get drafted in the first round who have gone on to make a huge impact not only on their teams but on the league as well. However, throughout the history of the NHL, there have been some first overall picks that have gone the complete opposite way and did not pan out the way we all expected them to. Keeping that in mind, here are the top six worst first overall picks in NHL history. Greg Jolly, the Washington Capitals, 1974. We're going back a number of years for this one, back when the draft was still referred to as the NHL Amateur Draft. In 1974, the Washington Capitals were joining the NHL as an expansion team and were granted the first overall pick in the draft. With that pick, they chose Greg Jolly. Jolly came into the draft hot, coming off a 92-point season with the WHL's Regina Pats, followed up with a 20-point playoff performance in just 16 games played. He led the Pats to a Memorial Cup championship and was named the Memorial Cup MVP. So with all that under his belt, it goes without saying that he was a hot commodity. The Capitals GM at the time, Milt Schmidt, referred to Jolly as the next Bobby Orr. With 97 points in 365 games played, I think it's safe to say that Jolly did not live up to that hype. His career was spent bouncing between the AHL and the NHL, with the majority of that time being in the AHL. Jolly only spent 98 games, collecting 33 points and racking up a whopping minus 116 with the team that drafted him before being traded to the Detroit Red Wings. He spent the rest of his career with the Red Wings organization, winning two Calder Cup championships in the AHL. To further prove that he was not the next Bobby Orr, he finished his NHL career with a whopping minus 165. Rick DiPietro, drafted by the New York Islanders in 2000. Rick DiPietro last played an NHL game in the 2012-2013 season before getting bought out in the 2013 offseason. But luckily for him, he continues to get paid by the New York Islanders until the end of the 2028-29 season. DiPietro is an interesting case because the Islanders took a chance on him just three years after drafting another goalie in Roberto Luongo, which they drafted fourth overall. The Islanders felt that DiPietro had a better future ahead of him than Luongo and traded Luongo to the Florida Panthers. Obviously, this goes without saying as Luongo was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame recently, but this did not work out the way the Islanders wanted it to. DiPietro was supposed to be the next best goalie in the NHL after dominating the 2000 World Juniors and the NCAA for Boston University. He did play 318 games for the Islanders, occasionally looking like an average starting goalie, but more often than not, he struggled in between the pipes. To make matters worse and pile on the hype that he simply could not live up to, in 2006, the Islanders signed him to a massive 15-year contract worth $67.5 million. But between the contract, his struggles, the team struggles, and a series of injuries that seriously limited his play, there was simply no chance for Rick DiPietro to live up to those first overall pick standards. Brian Lawden drafted by the Minnesota North Stars in 1983. While Brian Lawden finds himself on this list, it doesn't change the history that he made. The centerman was the first American-born player to ever be drafted first overall, and he's the only first overall pick to be selected out of a U.S. high school. Lawden entered the draft after racking up 171 points in his two seasons prior for Mount St. Charles Academy and played for Team USA at the World Juniors and the World Championship. The Minnesota North Stars selected him above players such as Pat LaFontaine, Steve Iserman, and Cam Neely. That has to hurt. Lawden made the jump straight to the North Stars after being convinced by the team to turn professional. He played five seasons for the North Stars, putting up a respectable 162 points in 303 games played, but he never lived up to that first overall status. He was then traded to the New York Rangers and spent the remainder of his career jumping from the NHL to the AHL to the IHL and back. From 1987 to 1993, he played for seven NHL teams, three IHL teams, and one AHL team. It's safe to say his hockey career did not pan out the way he hoped it would after getting selected first overall, and you can't help but think if he was given the chance to develop his game a little more before being thrown into the NHL, his career could have turned out differently. Patrick Stefan, drafted by the Atlanta Thrashers in 1999. The 1999 NHL draft is arguably the worst draft in history, and it starts right at the top with the Atlanta Thrashers selecting Patrick Stefan first overall. 
It's even worse when you look at the next two players taken after him, which were Daniel and Henrik Sedin. The Czech centerman played in the Czech League and then made his way to Long Beach to the Ice Dogs of the IHL prior to playing in the NHL. The IHL was then considered the second best league in the world and Stefan, despite being held just to 33 games in his draft year due to a concussion, was an all-star in that league. He went on to spend just seven seasons playing in the NHL, six of those with the Thrashers and one with the Dallas Stars, where he will forever be remembered for making one of the worst on-ice mistakes in NHL history. He never scored more than 14 goals or 40 points in a single season. Overall, Stefan disappointed in his NHL career, but he can't entirely be held at fault. Stefan should have never been taken first overall and wouldn't have been if it wasn't for Brian Burke. Burke made a series of trades to ensure that he landed the Sedin Twins for the Vancouver Canucks and in those dealings, he landed the Thrashers the first overall pick with the assurance that they would not select a Sedin. With all that being said, Stefan still would have been a bust, but it just makes it sting a little more knowing that he went first overall. Alexander Daig, drafted by the Ottawa Senators in 1993. He was supposed to be the next great superstar to hit the NHL and the Ottawa Senators landed the undisputed number one prospect in the 1993 NHL entry draft when they picked Alexander Daig. Daig came into the league after collecting 247 points in 119 QMJHL games for the Victoriaville Tigers. He was so highly touted that the Quebec Nordiques offered players like Owen Nolan, Peter Forsberg, and Ron Hextel, as well as draft picks, in order to draft the next great French Canadian. In his first season, he tallied 20 goals and collected a career high 51 points. But it's safe to say he never blossomed into that player that he was supposed to be. He was given a massive contract of five years worth $12.5 million, which later led to the introduction of the entry-level contract salary cap. And although Daig had a ton of confidence, it seemed that he never gave enough effort on the ice. After being drafted, he said, I'm glad I got drafted first because no one remembers number two. Now that is a level of cockiness that you need to back up once you're in the league because in this case, he was very wrong as the number two pick was future Hall of Famer Chris Pronger. Alexander Degg did end up playing 616 NHL games and collected 327 points. It's not exactly what was expected of him, but better than many players who have had NHL careers, it just wasn't first overall material. Nail Yakupov, drafted by the Edmonton Oilers in 2012. Unfortunately for Nail Yakupov, he has become the poster boy for draft busts. After dominating in the OHL with the Sarnia Sting for 170 points in 107 games played and terrorizing teams at the international level, the Edmonton Oilers used their third straight first overall pick on Yakupov. After being drafted, Yakupov made his way to the KHL for the first half of the 2012-2013 NHL lockout and he collected 18 points in 22 games played. Not too bad and things are still looking up for the young player. He then made the jump back to the NHL that year, racking up 31 points in 48 games played. Now from there, this is when the Russian wingers play started to trend downward fast. He played just three more campaigns for the Oilers, only crossing 30 points once, which was 33 points in the 2014-2015 season. After giving him several chances, the Oilers decided to move on from Yakupov, trading him to the St. Louis Blues for Zach Pacero, who never played an NHL game. He collected only nine points in 40 games, and then the Blues let him walk into free agency. The Colorado Avalanche then gave him a shot on a one-year deal, where he tallied just 16 points in 58 games played. It's sad to say, but that was it for Yakupov, who headed back to the KHL in the 2018 2019 season. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.